In this video you will learn how to build such beautiful charts by using the charts library inside React, and we will build a line chart, bar chart, and pie chart. There are lots of different libraries for charts inside React, but we really need something extremely stable, bulletproof, and covered with TypeScript. And the most popular solution here is Recharts. As you can see in GitHub, it is quite popular. We have here 23k stars, and it already exists for quite some time. Also, it is decently covered with TypeScript, so it is a safe bet. And the most popular use case for us is a line chart that you need really often. Here I prepared a component popularity chart, and as you can see, this component is completely empty. Additionally, I prepared a data, which is an array of objects with name and then React, Angular, and View. The main point is that we will compare the popularity of these three frameworks and render them on the screen. This is why every single object here stores all three values of these frameworks. And in order to start using Recharts, we need to install it. This is why npm install Recharts. Now inside our popularity chart, we can use a line chart, which is our first line graph. And here we want to provide a width. As you can see, it is nicely covered with TypeScript. We are getting autocomplete. For example, 600, and our height will be 300. And as you can see here, we must provide a data. But it is not enough. Inside, we need to render every single line. We want one line for React, one for Angular, and one for Vue. This is why we're importing line from Recharts, and here we need to provide first of all a type. Our type will be a string monotone, which means it's a solid line, and here we must provide a data key. This is our unique identifier, in our case it will be React, which means this will be a line for React, and we can add here a stroke, which is a color, and also a stroke width. Let's set it to three. As you can see in browser, we already rendered our graph with the line. We can't hover here, we can't click on these dots, but we see some information. Essentially, all these objects were rendered with these values like 33, 42, and so on, and it builds a graph with these values. Now we must do exactly the same for two other lines. Let's copy paste the line. It will be for data key angular and for data key view. And here I want to change the color of Angular and also a color of Hue. Let's save this and check again. These are our three lines for each of the framework. But it still doesn't look like a normal graph. This is why here after our line we want to render a Cartesian grid. And as you can see all these imports are coming from Recharts. Now in browser we can see our grid which was rendered, so now it looks like graph, but we still can configure this grid by using stroke-array and provide inside 3 and 3. It will change this solid grid to the stroke, but also we are missing our axis. This is why here we want to render x axis, and here we want to provide a data key that we want to render on the bottom. In our case it will be a name because this is the information that we want to see on our graph when we see these values. As you can see now, we rendered x-axis with correct years. Now we need to render our y-axis, and we don't need to provide anything, because there is no data key here. It simply renders all values between the smallest and the biggest. But we can improve it even more with the tooltip. This is why here let's render a tooltip. And now we can hover on every single point. First of all, it is highlighted. And secondly, we see a tooltip with the year and all framework popularity in this specific year. And the last one, what I want to render here is a legend to understand what we are even comparing. As you can see now on the bottom, there is React, Angular, and Vue, and our graph is fully ready. If this React code looks complicated for you and you think that you are missing some React knowledge, I have a full course with React interview questions where I covered all knowledge of React that you need to know and I will link it in the description box below. So don't forget to check it out. Now let's implement a pie chart and it will be a little bit more complicated. So here is an expenses chart where I want to render our expenses in the pie. And here is how our data looks like. It's an array of objects with name and value, which actually means we have our slices of the pie with some value. Additionally, here I prepared some colors to color our pie later. 
Now inside our expenses, we also start with pie chart, just like we did with line chart. And we must provide here a width, let's go with 600, and our height will be 300. Now inside we will render a pie, and we must provide our data as a prop there. Additionally, we need to specify a data key. In our case, it will be value, because exactly by value, we want to slice our pie. As you can see in browser, we rendered our pie chart. We don't really see any numbers whatsoever, but we can select each pie and it was sliced by our data that we provided here. In order to make it usable, we can at least use here label and the tooltip after our pie. We already used tooltip previously because this is a generic component for all charts that we have. Let's check again, it looks better, we see here our numbers, we can hover and we see the label with transportation equals 600 for example. This is already usable, but it's all the same color, which is quite depressing. And in order to configure a color, we need to use an inner element cell, which we can use in order to configure every single piece of our pie. This is why inside the pie we can map through our data and get access to every single entry and its index. And now here inside we can render the cell, it is coming from Richards, and we must provide a unique key here, for example a string cell dash and an index, and we can use fill, and inside fill we want to use a variable, our colors that I prepared here on the top, you can see it, and inside I want to pass our index. So here we loop through our data, this is this array, and for every single element we rendered a custom cell. As you can see in browser, it looks much better, because every single slice is rendered with different color. But here I want to show you something more complicated. For example, we can update our tooltip, because let's say we don't really want to render transportation 600, we want to see here also a dollar sign, which means we need a custom tooltip. This is why here on the top I want to create a new component, custom tooltip, and here we will get some props. And what we want to destructure here is active and payload. And inside this function we need to return a custom markup for our tooltip. And you for sure want to say, okay, but we are using here anyway, we are not using a lot of data types from Richards. And actually Richards has some data types, but it is not really comfortable to reuse them when you are writing code. They simply didn't create all these needed types, so you can type all your code. And this is a bit disappointing. Now inside our custom tooltip, as it is being rendered for every single element, we need to check if we need to render tooltip or not. This is why here we can write, if we are active, so this piece is activated now, and we have our payload, and we have our payload length, because we will get our information as an array, we want to render our markup. In our case, we want to return null. Now inside our custom markup, I will write div with class name custom tooltip. And here let's create p tag with class name label. And inside we want to render payload zero dot name. This is actually this stuff that we want to render. After this a colon and another value will be payload zero dot value. Most importantly here we render dollar sign because this is exactly what we wanted to render. Now here I can use this custom tooltip and provide it for the tooltip as a content. So let's render here our tooltip. Now in the browser, when we're hovering on the element, I can see here transportation 600 with dollar. And this is actually a custom tooltip. Here I use the class custom tooltip and label, and this is my global class inside global CSS with background and the border. But now we can make it even more complicated. I don't really want to dive too deep, but let's say we want to render percentages on every slice. This is why here I want to paste the function that I already prepared. We will go through it. And now here I want to render it for our label. So we have our label without any parameters. Now here we can provide a function render customized label. Additionally to that, we need to provide here a label line and set it to false, because we don't want to see lines anymore, we just want to see our percentages inside. And this is what this function does. 
we are getting here lots of different parameters like x and y, which are positions, the angle, radius, and so on. And now inside we are calculating new positions for our percentages. So the return of this function is a block of text with x and y, which means position, the fill text anchor, and our percents that we are rendering inside. This is how it will look in browser. We are getting these percentages in every single slice. So our pie chart is ready. But what about bar chart? Bars chart will be much simpler. So here is our data for views chart. We want to render here views, for example, of YouTube channel. We have here views and subs for every single year. So we have name, views and subs. Now inside we are starting with our bar chart where we are providing width 600 and height 300. And inside we want to render a bar. And we must provide here our data key that we want to render. It will be views. And we can use here fill to provide a different color. And in order for it to work on our bar charts, we must provide data. Let's see how it looks like. We rendered our bars of views. Why views? Because here we provided data key views inside our bar. Now I want to copy paste this bar and render our subs. So here the data key will be subs and I will change the color. Now we rendered not only views but also subs. Additionally, to improve our graph, we can render here standard stuff like Cartesian grid with stroke 3 and 3, with x axis and data key name, this is what we are rendering on the bottom, and y axis. And additionally, we will render here a tooltip. Let's check again. Here are our bars. We can hover on every single year. We get a tooltip with views and subs. We see our axis and our grid, but on hover it doesn't look great because the hovering on this block hides completely our bars. In order to improve that, first of all on our tooltip, we can apply some cursor styling. We can set here fill transparent. And additionally, on our bars, we can add a property active bar and customize it with the component. It will be a rectangle component where we can use a fill, for example, gold and stroke, let's say purple. Now let's copy paste this active bar to our subs and let's change fill to pink. Now when I'm hovering here, we can see our bars and they are rendered in a different color. So Recharts is an amazing library that I highly recommend, but I have more to that. The popular UI library ShedCN, where you can simply copy paste some components for React, used Recharts to implement all these beautiful graphs that you can see here. So you just use a mix of Recharts component and ShedCN components, and then you are getting Recharts components which are styled and animated. And don't forget that if you need to prepare for your next React interview to get a new job and earn more money, I have lots of interview questions already covered for you with practical tasks here.